Hello, Alan Thiel here from Midwest Machinery Company. Today's video we'd like to show a little bit of a walk around and a post-season inspection of a John Deere 712C corn head, chopping corn head. We'll start with a little bit of the safety issue. Um, because we do have to get under this head to do the inspection, we do have the feeder house cylinder stop down, so we're we're looking at the safety of that part of it. You guys just finished up the year, so if we're doing a post-season inspection, you pretty much remember probably whether your warning lights are working. Make sure your warning lights are working. Make sure all your reflectors are good on it. All your shields are in place. I do have a couple of them taken off this head just for inspection purposes, but we'll put them back on as soon as we get done with the inspection. As far as greasing this head, general maintenance, make sure you grease these drive shafts. It kind of gets overlooked a little bit sometimes, but these drive shafts do move in and out of quite a bit with your contour master working. So make sure you get the holes lined up in there and get some grease in them shafts every 50 hours. Okay, oil level on this chain case. You can pull this off. You're going to look in here at your chain. You're going to tension your chain, make sure that's right. This is the oil level in this. This particular one on these head is checked with the head in operating position with the snoots on the ground. All the other oil levels on this are checked with it in a raised position. So just make sure this one is checked with it down and the rest of them are with the head up. The shields open up good to get at it. This one being a 712, there is a drive chain for the auger on both sides of the head because it's a split auger. I'll show you the drive chain for that on the other side. When we move around the front of this head, you start looking at underneath it. I'm going to start with the underside of it just because we got this side a little higher in the air. These shields are very important. The, the row, dividers underneath that keep the material from flowing from one row to the next on a chopping head are very important. Otherwise, we start pushing too much trash from one side to the other and then we overload a slip clutch over there or we leave streaks in our field and we leave heavier residue and less residue. So these, these do wear out with that stock beating against them. So you're gonna have to replace them at some time, but make sure those are in good shape. Your chopping row unit, the knives. Um, this particular one has only been run one direction. It still can be flipped over and have a sharp side left on the other side. It's starting to get fairly dull here, so it would be time to change that and get it flipped over. Um, the snoots all are all tipped up here so we can see underneath it pretty good. We move across to the where I have a couple of these extra snoots flipped all the way up. We can look at things like drive chain tension and drive chain sprockets and how wore this chain is. Um, if we look up here on this tightener, there should only be about an eighth of an inch gap in this pipe. So we do have some give, but not enough that it can jump off the sprocket. So this one needs to be tightened up just a little bit. But we also have about two inches of tightener left here. So we do know that our, our chain isn't stretched horribly. When our chain starts to get stretched a long ways, it's going to get pretty tight down in here. We're going to run out of tightener. So that's, the, that's one of the indicators on the chain. Um, if you look at the stock rolls, we could look down in here and we see a pretty even gap in this stock roll. And that's telling me that there's not a lot of wear in there. Uh, we're starting to see some of these heads that are getting fairly old, fairly a lot of acres on them. And we're starting to see more wear in there than what there probably should be. Um, so maybe we should be considering putting stock rolls in some of these corn heads. I know this year was a pretty easy year. We didn't have any trouble pulling trash through, but um, if you get into some other tougher conditions, maybe that could be an issue down the road. So look at that one. Oil levels on in here. We have a our main, in, main, main gear case to run our chains is a is a dipstick there are two lines in here as long as the oil level is between there, there we're fine that's an 80 90 gear lube in there on the chopping head there are actually two plugs to check in this one here the front one is this is the oil level right here this one down here is the drain if we're going to change it but here is the actual oil level again make remember this one that one all of these are checked with the with the head up except for the one except for the one on the end for that chain that one's with the head in the down position so just remember them oil levels um, as far as wiring we do have some wiring for our header height sensing and for our row sense make sure that our wiring's not getting beat up in there and going to cause you a problem when next year rolls around 
Um, your adjustments for your snoots are there. I have this snoot clipped off to the side so we can get out of easy. Again, same chain on this side. I do have this shield pulled off on this side so we can see our auger drive chain, which that's going to be the same on the opposite side of this head. Some of them are only going to have it on one hand if you, if you have a solid head. So you can get that in here and inspect your chain good. You can loop that chain up. On the back side of here, you can see the tightener, the idler. I also have another shield off here and the slip clutch for it. This slip clutch also is a 50 hour, or a, it's an annual greaser, 200 hours. Um, they, they recommend 10 pumps of grease. There are probably, there are multiple grease cirques here. There's one here, there's one here, there's another one down here. You only grease one of those grease cirques, 10 pumps. So that's the grease cirque, that's the slip clutch for the, for the auger. <clears throat> if we look underneath here, here is the other oil level on your chopping gear case. There are two plugs here. The reason there's two plugs is if you flip on the other side of the machine, these are flipped over. This is a drain. This is the actual oil level. So we want our oil level up to there with this thing raised up. Uh, and then we have slip clutches under here too, which are actually for each row unit. And again, they have multiple grease cirques in them. The only reason they put multiple grease cirques in it so you don't have to turn the head over to, to, find, to find a grease cirque, you can only have to grease one of them. And again, 10 pumps per year. Here again, we can see some of the shielding on the on here that's starting to wear. Um, this one's not real bad yet, but we're starting to see some wear there. And another drive shaft over here. This lever right here is the gearbox disconnect on a 2013 or newer corn head. So anybody that's got a 20, 2012 or older won't have that. But that's a gearbox where you can shut your chopping head on and off, where you can chop with the roll or not chop with it. So that, that's an option there. Now that we have a head a little bit lower to the ground where we can see at it, we're not going to crawl underneath it. The auger adjustments are another thing we need to look at a little bit. Um, we'll, we can see it on the end there a little bit, but you want to look at your clearance between the floor here. Depending on the size of your ears, sometimes we want to make sure we're down low enough that we're not that we're not scraping the kernels on the off the ears up in the corn head. There is actually an attachment that can go in on the back side of here to fill some of that gap in so we get a smoother transition of our ears across there. So you want to look at the auger setting, you want to look at your stripper plate setting in the back, make sure those are correct. If you do have to raise it up and down, out on the end, here's your adjustment on the end of this auger as far as your height for your auger. And then also there's slots in the back of here where you can move it forward and back a little bit. That's an adjustment that'll that'll be made sometimes if you're if you're bringing up a lot of trash in, you might need to move your auger up and forward a little bit. But if you're got good clean corn, you're not breaking off a lot of stock. You're going to want it down and back. It'll you want to keep it as close to the floor as you can and keep the ears moving across without without scrubbing off any kernels and causing any damage up in the head. So. That's kind of a quick walk around of a, of a corn head. Um, make sure your chains are in good shape. Make sure all your oil levels are in good shape. You're going to save yourself a lot of trouble down the road. Thank you.